here we go. So, Loki, Season 1, Episode 1, Thoughts. I mean... It's, it's, I'm, I'm running out of new ways to say that I love every new, you know, Disney Plus MCU thing, so I'll, I'll, I'm just gonna dive right in instead. Spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. As usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, especially made, videos made by new rock stars, Screamer, Nerdist, CBR, and Screen Crush. Now, they added a few flourishes to Loki's endgame scene. I like it. I like it. Can we just take a brief moment to appreciate that the first time in this episode that we see the endgame scene, we are now, we are watching an original event that's been embellished upon twice now. The original scene is from the original Avengers, you know, right after the scene we see of him saying, I'll have that drink now. The first layer of embellishment is from Endgame 2019, and now we're getting one more in 2021 on Loki the show. It just... I kind of hope that they'll do one more, like, the next time somehow. Yeah. Now, I, I honestly, I kind of hope that at least someone out there tries to get into watching this show without having watched any other MCU, and it's just confused that every single character during this first bit, that would be hilarious, because kids, it's a lot. Like, the, the show really expects everyone going in to know all of these characters, and so, yeah. We get a green Loki-style Marvel Studios logo, and Loki pulls an Iron Man and lands face-first in the desert, and Loki gives the speech to the confused people there, I quite like, and, you know, as, as several people have pointed out online also, He's still in 2012 Loki mode. You know, I am burdened with glorious purpose. That's exactly what he said to Nick Fury right after arriving at the start of that movie. I've had my fill of idiots in armored suits telling me what to do. You know, Loki, Tony died for your sins. There are at least two, maybe even three different ways you can interpret that, and you're free to interpret it in any of, any of them. There we go. Loki tries to run, but she presses a button and he's standing right in front of him again. I really like the, the messing with time in this, how the... Yeah, and, and just the, like, they're, they're basically just done with, you know, like, okay, right after they get into a place and investigate, they're like, okay, there's someone around here somewhere, but we don't know exactly where, so we're gonna, you know, we, we've got the stick ready and everyone, you know, but the moment that they've actually caught someone, they're, you know, with, like when Loki tries to use magic, Hunter, what was it, Hunter 15, at first she manages to stifle the, the chuckling and the giggling, but then she just can't help herself. And, you know, when, when, yeah, when he tries to run, she's not like, oh, come here, back. you know, she's just like, okay, and she presses the button and then he's, yeah. I really like the the smiling face on the screen that you know that melts all his clothes. Now hang on just a minute, Loki. You're in an MCU production that is named after you. You have to get shirtless. It's in the contract. Poor Loki just keeps falling down from you know through through one uh, what what are those called the door and the yeah one after another. You know and and it's. Yeah, some, someone already stepped on my line. I was going to say, you know, I wonder if that's better or worse than falling for 30 minutes. But, yeah, somebody beat me to it. Do a lot of people not know if they're robots? Well, someone's never read Philip K. Dick or watched an adaptation of his. If you were a robot, the machine would melt. Holy crap. Take a ticket. There's only two of us here. Take a ticket. I really enjoy watching Miss Minutes, the mascot for the TVA. I really love, I just, like, she literally says, you know, you're here to stay in, stay in front. Like, st yeah, what are those called? Stay, stay in trial for your crime. Don't hesitate to let us know how, how we're doing. And just, like, <laughs> just the, the, that it, it goes from like, okay, you did something awful and you're about to stand trial, and then 
you know, any feedback would be appreciated. <laughs> clever way to get the core concepts across in short space of time, just miss minutes explaining the background. That could lead to madness, like another multiversal war. <laughs> Got that audience? That's, you know, for, yeah, I, I, I can't help but wonder if that, if that multiverse of madness might be something coming up in a Doctor Strange movie, I don't know. And the guy melts the guy who didn't get a ticket, and Loki gets like really scared, and like he's he's checking all his pockets, and oh, ticket, ticket, I got my ticket, I got my ticket, don't worry, don't worry. And I also really appreciate like that's like immediately, you you have to establish some stakes here, you know what, what really what what could happen if the the, you know, and and especially. Because the you know, right after we meet the TVA, they they don't seem necessarily the most threatening. They you know, especially once you see the the like offices and you know, yeah, and it, that also means it has an even greater contrast. You know, it's this just yeah. And Mogus is investigating a murder on TVA people. For a second, we think Mobius is getting away with insulting his co-worker, but he speaks every language in the timeline, too, which also, you know, that makes a lot of sense. And it's actually, we, it's, you know, the MCU doesn't often address this whole idea of, like, do different people speak different languages? Because, like, you know, Thor speaks, like, when Thor speaks, nobody on Earth is ever like, why doesn't he just speak English? Like, apparently... What Thor speak? What you know? What what they speak in Asgard and on Jotunheim and you know these various places apparently just sounds like English to people on Earth, even though you know. But here it actually is. No, the the different people, and and someone one of the Easter egg people pointed out that that you know Loki can't speak. I, I yeah I I. I the, the people that he landed in front of in, in the desert, he spoke English to them and they didn't know what he was saying. But the TVA people can speak to anyone. And when asked who did this, the kid points to the devil and the, the stained glass. And the devil gave the kid some candy. There's something here you may want to see. We went almost 15 minutes with Alec. You better come take a look at this in a procedural, yeah, a part procedural. Perhaps you could give me a task force and some resources. I love the look on the judge's face. Like, she's like, did he seriously just say that? You know? And and the thing with, you know, he, yeah, he, Loki asks, so what do, what do the space Loki do? They dictate the timeline. And what do you do? I dictate according to, I dictate the timeline according to their dictations. Now, do you plead guilty or not? But yeah, the, the Loki trying to use his powers and it won't work there. Yeah. You know, Hunter 15 manages to stifle the laugh for a few seconds at least. I'll burn this place to the ground. I'll show you where my desk is. You can start there. <laughs> really loving the shot that shows all the buildings and the TVA. This place is a nightmare. That's another department. Now that department, I will hurt you, help you burn down. Does... Does Monsters, Inc. exist in the MCU now? I'm, okay, so that's technically not Nightmares, but, yeah. I love how Mobius is just completely done. He is so over Loki. He does not care about Loki's threats or questions. He's just, like, he's been doing this for a really long time, and he, like, 
obviously other people than Loki have threatened to, you know, yeah, threatened terrorism against the TVA, have threatened TVA mem individuals personally against them, yeah. I like Loki's monologue about that if he were king, people would be better off because he'd take away their freedom. It really does give you a window into, you know, because that, that is the thing, like, what do people like this think? You know, do they, do they just not care about their subject? That's sadly, of course, the true for a lot of them, but yeah. And Mobius activates the machine, and Loki sees his pictures by the Avengers. I, I really love the, the, you know, all the, the retro design and the, the analog technology just of, of the TVA, you know, how like basically a lot for, a, for them, a lot of things haven't gone any further than like the 50s or 60s. And then at the same time, they have these ridiculous, you know, ah, what are those called? Futuristic technologies. I'll have that drink now, and Mobius offers him a soda, and as, you know, I, I have to admit, I, I don't pay enough attention to soda, what, what sodas do and don't exist, but some of these great people pointed out the, the soda, what was it called, Josta or something, J Jack Hosta, Josta, Some, something like that, and that's apparently, you know, that, that hasn't, nobody has had those for decades, I forget how long. And we see Loki as D.B. Cooper. I was young and I lost a bet to Thor. I can 100% see Thor from at the start of the first Thor movie or further back being involved in that kind of thing. What makes Loki tick? Sounds like you toned down that joke for someone. And Mobius starts showing Loki what would have happened if he hadn't picked up the Tesseract in Endgame. All the things that happened to him. And how, you know, good things happen to the people he fights. You think you sent them to Thor, but instead you sent them to Frigga. So that was what we were supposed to take from that scene. I'm really glad to have that explained. Eight years later, look, I am, I, I go to bat for the Dark World every so often. I don't think that movie is anywhere near as bad as people say it is. But that really should have been made clearer. Especially if that was really what we're supposed to take from it. I, for, for all these years, I thought that was him in like a moment of spitefulness sending Curse to, to kill, to, to Frigga. Now, it's... Sorry, the time truce only works on you, not the furniture, which is why he ended up sitting on the floor. And Loki got his hands on the time twister and resets to before he was in that room. Very clever. And in the drawer with the Tesseract, there are a bunch of other Infinity Stones, and apparently they're used, you know, some, some of the guys use them as paperweights. And Loki loops himself back into where... Let's see. Yeah, I cannot tell what that note is supposed to mean. I have to move on. Yeah, he, he sits down on the machine, and he's legitimately sad at the death of his mother, and at Odin's last goodbye. And he is not happy at seeing Thanos kill him. End of file, it says, after having showed his death. So there really were no more resurrections this time. And Loki manages to put the neckband on Hunter 15, and then just loops her. I don't enjoy hurting people. Yeah, that is, a, that is a really bad Loki accent. I'm just gonna have to... I don't enjoy hurting people. I don't enjoy it. I do it because I have to. Because I've had to. It's part of the illusion. It's the cruel, elaborate concert by the weak to inspire fear. A desperate play for control. You do know yourself. Even an Infinity Stone is useless here. The TVA is formidable. Now, let's see. Yeah, the, the, actually, yeah, I made some notes about that, so moving on. The variant we're hunting is you. Very cool way to close out the third. Yeah. 1858. And 
I'm, I'm just going to be, for, for now, I'm going to be referring to them as Villain Loki. Villain Loki sets the Minutemen on fire, hence the oil. You don't see Villain Loki's face yet. I'm guessing there's going to be a dramatic reveal, and they got that, you know, the, the thing that the timekeepers use to reset when something has been changed in time, so that was the plan. I really like the end credits where you see all this TVA technology, you know, th this office technology from the 60s. So the credits at the end confirm it. I thought that was Tara Strong playing Miss Minutes. I really hope we get more of her. It's a good episode, good pilot episode, but it is very much for sure a pilot episode. There's very little that actually happens. At, it's a lot of rules being established about the TVA, we meet the characters working there, it tells us what the rest of the show's gonna be, you know. Loki helping Mobius to hunt down the you know, the other Loki variant, the villain Loki. I love how much character development this episode gives Loki. He sees what would have happened to him if he had stayed on the path he was headed down in the movies and confronts him about whether or not he likes hurting people. We see a better side to him. You know, the I have to admit I was a tiny bit worried that we were going to basically I mean they they have regressed Loki, but they can't you know, he the the one we saw in you know, the one that died in Infinity War, he was at the end of his arc. You know, I'm not saying that it couldn't still have been entertaining to have stories with him, but there's not that much more he can do in the way of redeeming himself. So I'm really glad that they didn't repeat, you know, that, that was what I was really worried about, that they were just going to have him do the same thing. But really, you know, in, in the movies, okay, so after, a, let's see, yeah, I'm okay, I'm just really briefly going to run through. So the first movie, he, you know, he's, he's jealous of Thor, he wants the throne, then he gets the throne, he realizes that he's, you know, he's a, he's a frost giant, and that's, you know, like like he says to to, Lo, to the Odin, the I'm the monster that parents tell their children about. You know, and he when when Odin says that you know Loki says I I could have killed them for you, father. No Loki. Then he lets go because he'd rather die than not be able to win his father's affection like that. And let's see. So yeah. Avengers, he he wants to conquer, you know, Thor himself puts it very well. So you take Earth as recompense for these imagined slights of yours. Then in, you know, in Thor too, he basically just wants revenge. And he's willing to work with Thor, you know, because, you know, to, to honor their mother who just died. Let's see, then we have... Yeah, and he, he faces that and takes over the throne. Then in Thor 3, he has the, the throne and, you know, he has to say goodbye to his father. Then he ends up on Sakaar. And, you know, for a while he just, he's, he's, uh, you know, he, he just, appe he tries to appeal to Jeff Goldblum. And then near the end of the movie, he tries to trick Thor. Yeah, you know, for a while, he essentially, he has the influence that he possibly could get Thor out of the gladiator, you know, situation. But he instead just leaves him there. Then they, you know, Loki tries to trick Thor, but Thor actually knew it was coming and tricked him. But then, you know, because of, ah, uh, what's his face? Uh, Korg, I think it's Korg, right? Who who brings him to to Asgard, and then yeah, you know, basically like by the let's see. Okay, yeah. Now thinking about it, okay, for sure, there's room for Loki to redeem himself more than than he had by the end of Ragnarok and by the start of Infinity War, but. Still, like, you know, at, at some point he also gets so, we, we don't want his, you know, him to lose his, his teeth. We want him to still be exciting and fun and unpredictable. But here, on this show, it's not really 
it's not about revenge, it's about showing that he's better than what a lot of people see. You know, Mobius comes to Loki and says, I know everything you've ever done. Show me something that I don't know about. You know, tell these people something I don't know about. You know, the, the, and, and finally, by the end of the episode, Loki says, no, I don't like hurting people, but I have to come across as strong, you know, and when, you know, we, we don't know, it's possible that Loki won't just say yes right away. We don't know how he responds to being told to hunt a variant of himself. But basically, Mobius is saying, here's a chance for you to destroy the worst parts of you. You know, the, the, a, a way to, and, and that's, you know, that's something that fiction like this can do. You know, a lot of people at some point in our lives will stop and will look at who we are and will be like, this is, this is not who I want it to be, you know, and will try to change. And, you know, this is a piece of fiction that takes that experience and makes it visual, you know, makes it a, a different, yeah. And it is also, like, he literally, he found out, you know, he'll, he'll die soon. And he won't be, he won't die a king. You know, he'll, he'll have nothing. And, you know, okay, for sure there's people that mourn him. It's not like, there's not, but he didn't really, he didn't accomplish any of the things he set out to do. So, yeah. And, and briefly want to mention some of the other Easter eggs people have already pointed out that the, you know, in, in this episode, Loki says, you know, well, I'm sh you know, okay, yeah, sure. I'm sure Coulson feels great about having brought the Avengers together, but he's dead. You know, Mo Mobius doesn't say, oh, no, no, he's, he's alive in, in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. He is alive. So, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is, according to this, simply not canon at all. Because Mobius would, I, I, all, yeah, for sure. Mobius would not, you know, pass up that opportunity. Like, you know, Loki's like, oh yeah, okay, so I brought the Avengers together, whatever, I still kill the guy. If Mobius could say, oh no, no, he didn't die. And in fact, he, you know, yeah, I haven't watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm, I'm, it's, it's in the cards, I'm going to. But that is, I, you know, it's, as far as I know, he's still, like, in charge in that. As, as a, he has a, a fair level of power, you know, so that's definitely something Mobius would, yeah. So, according to this episode, there is not currently a, a multiverse in the MCU, but there might be, depending on what happens in the show, and that, that makes a lot of sense, and that is, you know, that is a way for this, that's another thing I have to admit, I was a little bit worried that there wasn't really gonna be, like, that this was just gonna be, oh, let's have some fun with Loki for two seasons of ten episodes each. It'd be really good if there were also some, if if it led to something, you know. And yeah, it seems like it'll lead to the multiverse. And we don't know exactly when in the run that's going to happen, but for for sure, you know, could imagine that. Certainly by the end of the run, a multi, you know, a multiverse will have been created, and possibly already destroyed. But yeah, so so that's a, a good because because that's the thing, like the moment you have, like, time traveling, these guys can travel to any time, any, you know, any way they want. But the the stakes are that, you know, variants can create branches, and if those branches don't get clipped, eventually it leads to a, a multiverse. And I have to wonder if the multiverse used to be because of Kang, and the the timekeepers think they defeated Kang, but really he just like he's in hiding and now he's going to yeah. It is also possible that Kang doesn't exist yet, at least not in the form that we know. Anyway, so I want to share my interpretation on a few things in the in this episode. So let's see the Yeah. The, the, the reason that the Tesseract ends up in, the, in a drawer at the TVA instead of being returned to the endgame scene, while Steve cannot return the Tesseract to that point since he got it from... What? One moment. 
Yeah, Steve cannot return the test rank to that point since the point he got it from was in the 70s. All he has to do is, tr you know, af after he drops it back off in the 70s, you know, then, then travel to before he, Tony, Bruce, and Scott go there and tell them they don't need to get the test rank. And in fact, it would be a problem if they didn't. So just, you know, go back and that's it. I can understand that some people are very upset that in this episode, Infinity Stones are reduced to paperweights, taking up space in TVA drawers. Now, we, we, we learned in this episode that it was a multiverse, and in fact, different parts of the multiverse wage war with nuclear vessels against other parts, and there was a clear winner. The way I see it, those Infinity Stones were used as weapons in that war and are from parts of the multiverse that lost. And we know that the six Infinity Stones create the flow of time, so I feel like it would make it would make sense to to put well, no right. It wouldn't make sense to put any of the Infinity Stones Right, any of the any of the excess Infinity Stones into the one sacred timeline. You know, I mean, think about if if you if you can't take it away without creating something dramatic, then why would you be able to put more in than there already are? You know, that clearly it it matters a lot. So yeah. I don't think that the drawer full of infinity stones means that there's no longer any weight to all the struggles to obtain them by good and bad guys alike in the Infinity Saga. You know, I, I saw one of the Easter egg people say that this means that from now on they're not going to be as important. And I think that's probably true. And honestly, I love the Infinity Saga, but I think I think it's okay for us to move on to something other than Infinity Stones. You know, I there are a lot of movies that deal with Infinity Stones, and we had the entire Infinity Gauntlet thing I, I don't think it's that interesting to go back to Infinity Stones. You know, we should go somewhere new, but... The the thing we gotta remember is the, the Infinity Stones in those drawers wouldn't... You know, you, you couldn't just have had, like, the TVA introduce them to the Sacred Timeline. All that would have happened is they would have created divergent branches and they would have to be removed again. Now, Loki didn't see the Infinity Stones as an end in themselves. He saw them as a means to an end, being king. But he definitely did see them as a necessary means, as a powerful means. Seeing a drawer full of powerless Infinity Stones put things into perspective for him. He realizes he could spend a lifetime chasing them, but it won't work, because that's not in his file. And by the end of the episode, he has revealed to Mobius and us that he is redeemable. He's headed to a redemption arc. Now... We don't see him agree in this episode to the mission of stopping the other Loki, but now that he's admitted that he doesn't enjoy hurting people, it would make a lot of sense for him to try to stop the other Loki from hurting people, feeling responsible for him. I find this a lot more compelling than the idea of this Loki running around trying to become king. It's not as though he will not be causing any mischief. The mischief is just not going to lead to people being hurt or him becoming king, unless he does at some point regress his character arc. But he's still going to have some fun and frustrate frustrate Mobius, like a spoiled child who only does his homework when the adults are watching him. At the end of the day, the homework does get done, but he does postpone it and act out for a while. Some of the Easter egg people say that being reset means deleted from the timeline or die. You know, I have to admit, the, at the very start, I thought it meant that they were just going to put him back. Like, uh, let's, let's see. I thought reset was like, you're free to go, you know, we're not gonna, versus, we're, you know, I mean, if they can manipulate time, maybe they just put that timeline on hold until the person, or maybe they put in a timekeeper in disguise, I don't know, but, you now apparently, you know, some of these certain people say reset means die, delete from the timeline. Yeah, they, they point out that whenever a, a variant created a branch, they immediately clip it. That's what that bomb thing they drop on the ground does, so that does make a lot of sense. And Screen Crush, you know, Ryan Airy on Screen Crush said that the evil Loki on the show is probably the one from the 2013 timeline, 
the yeah the the yeah the the 2013 timeline that we saw messed with in Endgame. I agree, and instead of me completely butchering what they said, in, you know, he his video is really good. Just you know, what watch that video for for the details on that. But that is all of the notes I had written down. But yeah, I yeah, just real quick. So far, I'm really loving the the this miniseries. I don't have a lot to see. I, I'm really, really glad that they continue to, like, this is the the third of these, and all three have such distinct identities. Like, I suppose you could say that Falcon and Captain America and the Winter Soldier is somewhat like Captain America 4. You know, there's a lot of Captain America 2 going on there, but it is still distinct. Captain America 2 didn't focus on race very much at all. There, there were a few things, you know, at the, the cop stare at Nick Fury's in his car, and he's like, you want to see my lease? And there's a little bit of a, yeah, you know, there's not nothing, but it's, there's nowhere near as much as in, in that series. And WandaVision, super unique. And this also, so far, you know, obviously there are other, excuse me, there are other stories with like time travel and loops and, and all these things but it's, yeah it's 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 very different from the MCU certainly and it doesn't it doesn't feel like I you know I, I, I don't watch it and think you know I mean I might as well just be watching Back to the Future or something and I do still maintain there's a lot of really great to Back to the Future part two at least but the Let's see. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited to see, you know. I I let's see. Right, right. One thing I saw several reviewers independently of one another say that the worst part of this episode was when we're seeing things we already we've already seen in the MCU. You know, when when it's showing things that have already happened, that that was when the show was at its weakest. I mean, I guess a little bit, but I, I don't know. I just, in their, from their mouths, it sounded like a major criticism, and I really didn't feel like it was that big of a deal. I'll, I'll grant that, you know, watching a character, watching something that we've already seen isn't the most exciting thing in the world. It's not that bad. It's not, it's not a big deal. I, I didn't think, you know, but yeah, and and once again, seriously, I swear, the moment that I really feel like the and the that Marvel dropped the ball on one of these, I'll say it. I will one hundred percent. Once again, Iron Man two definitely has problems, and uh, honestly, it's it's incredible that like when that movie came out, like we were all really disappointed. It's it's really good that that didn't end the MCU right there. Now, let's see. And, you know, I've talked about my issues with Thor Ragnarok, which just briefly, you know, personally, I don't, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. Apparently, like, LGBTQ people really like the movie. That's great. That's awesome. And I, I think I some of the way understand why, but I'm not going to presume to speak for them, but the, the, I try to be an ally, but that's, and anyway, that movie, I really, I maintain it, it doesn't have to end with a dumb joke right after Asgard has been destroyed, like, just let the moment hit us, you know, don't, don't have that joke, and, and it's so, just, just re-edit it slightly, you know, just have them standing there looking at it, have the whole thing collapse, and then cut back, and then Thor turns around, and, you know, like he does in the movie, just cut Korg's lines about, we can rebuild it if the foundation, oh, foundation gone, I guess we can't rebuild, come on, man, that was, that was these people's home, I get, okay, so some people didn't care, I cared, I've cared since the first movie, and I didn't, even, I didn't care that much about Thor in the comics, but I've cared from the very start of the movie trilogy, 
and the third movie comes in and just craps all over the first two. I just can't stand that. You know, the first four times we saw Thor, it craps all over. Every single, like, he's so determined to find out about the Infinity Stones, and then they turn it into a dumb joke. It's not even a funny joke. Like, they just have, you know, went looking for Infinity Stones, didn't find any. Just, just have him say, I was looking for the Infinity Stones, but then I found out that there was something wrong on Asgard, so I had to wait on that, or, or something, you know, just... So as you can tell, I'm I'm comfortable criticizing the MCU when I think that it, it makes mistakes. I'm not saying it never makes mistakes. But, yeah, really, really psyched, really... Yeah, really, I, I it's gonna be a difficult week-long wait once again. Uh, yeah, really, really excited to see, and yeah, I think, yeah, that, that absolutely covers everything. So, please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe. If, uh, yes, I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.